hello welcome back to my channel how are you guys doing okay today we want to discuss how we can derive akamu or pap or ogi from aunt jemima corn meal this corn meal can be found at um your local store probably at walmart um kroger draw or school depending on you know any store that you have around you all right let's get started um pour your and jamaima corn meal in a container here i'm i used three quarter of the bag and i'm pouring water directly from my tap into the container to make it into a smooth paste in nigeria we buy the corn or the maize take it to the grinder to grind it into the smooth paste and that's exactly what we are trying to do here so here we mix it you're going to feel some lump in, in the beginning it's okay do not mind just keep mixing while you pour your water if your water is coming from another bowl into the bowl you pour your aunt Jemima, it's okay or if you're doing it exactly the way i'm doing it right now it's okay just make sure you keep stirring and stirring until you take off all the lump we don't want no lump in the in the mixture I did not measure the amount of water I am putting into the cornmeal flour or cornmeal powder. I only eyeballed it, just making sure it is times three or times four of the amount of powder that I have. Do not mind the running consistency, it's okay. Now we're going to cover it and put it in a room temperature corner in the kitchen or in your house where it's not going to be disturbed for at least two to three days for fermentation process to occur so that we can achieve our desired pap or ogi or akamu on the third day this is what your mixture looks like the bubblish and the thingy on top of your water is an evidence of fermentation so the next thing you do is to just sieve the water away just like i am doing you don't need that water you just have to let it go you have to leave and make sure you do not pour your cornmeal that is already fermented in your container i'm sure you guys will be thinking what container is best it is best for you to use i think a plastic big plastic container if you have i don't have a plastic container this is what i have and that's what i'm making use of the next step is to grind and sieve but i'm going to transfer my content first into a smaller container because i'm going to be needing the bigger container which is the big pot i'm using here in a bit so pour your um cornmeal gradually into a grinder or blender this process is what we do in nigeria we take it to the commercial blender or commercial grinder I know in Yoruba it's called Elero. I don't know what it's called in Igbo or in Aosa. But I know you take it to them and then you grind it into a thick mixture. But here I am adding water just to help my blender. Turn it into a fine textured mixture. Here I am using a ninja blender and it's actually very powerful. And as you can see, I blend each batch which is not even very full and I actually added water for like 1 minute and 20 or 22 seconds and you're going to do this for every batch until you're done with grinding you need definitely your big container and another big container or something smaller the first one you want to have a lot of water in them because that's where you're going to be sieving your grinded cornmeal mixture with the water that you put while you were grinding it in your blender then the next step is for you to get your muslin bag to start the sieving process you can use this type of muslin bag that i'm using or you can use a sieve in nigeria it is called a jaw i'm sure most of you know it if you're yoruba okay. 
um, the agile that I just talked about, that one is like a bowl, but ha that has a sieve under. The sieve is a the hole in it can only allow very fine and tiny particles to pass through. So it's not going to be like the normal sieve that you're using sieving your rice or spaghetti. It's actually going to have a very fine face or a very fine surface area. You need to make sure you're washing it real good in the water to make sure your fine textured content comes out from the muslin bag into the water. That is very necessary in this process. After washing it in the first water, you have to put it in the second water to get the rest of the fine texture of the cornmeal that you have in the remaining shaft. When you're done, you can get another third bowl of water, but I've this is not my first time of doing this. I already know that at this point on my second attempt, I am fine with it. This is how your shaft is supposed to look like if you do it the right way. Very coarse in texture. You have Repeat the process in the first and second bowl or probably you want to add the third bowl until you're done. When you're done, pour the content in the second container into the first container if there is still space. But if there is no space, just leave the content of the second container in its container. It's slightly cover both, but in this video, I'm pouring both of them together because there is still enough space for the second content in my first container. I hope you understand what I'm saying. This is just to let everything be in one place for it to settle down. I left it overnight for six to eight hours. After six to eight hours, the content would have settled down and there would be clear water. Sieve the clear water and transfer your content into another smaller bowl that can contain it. I transferred mine into a transparent smaller bowl and left it for another two hours. After two hours, Ogi or Akamuat settled on the bottom of the container as you can see and there is more clear water i'm saving the clear water now to just leave my akamu and now i have my akamu the only thing remaining is for me to scoop this out because it is fine, it smells good, scoop it out, get my bold water and make a cam from it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helpful in the making of your Ogi or Akamu from easily accessible Aunt Jemima's corn meal. Guess what? You don't have to go through the hassle of Elero 
in Nigeria that you cannot get here in the diaspora. Thank you and have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.